In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at managing Smart Zone through the Ruckus WAN gateway. And before we jump into that, I want to take a look at the Smart Zone configuration so we can get an idea of what it is that we're going to be importing. So here you can see we have a virtual Smart Zone high scale instance with one domain and a few sites underneath that. We do have some APs that are associated to this domain and they are broken up into site A and site B. So site A has the T310D, the R650, and site B has the R320. If we look at our WLANs, you can see that fun.co, our domain, has four different WLANs and each of them have a different encryption method. They are all open, but some are running WPA2, 3, some are running mixed, and one of them is just completely open. Uh, so now we're going to flip over back to the Ruckus WAN gateway and walk through the process of importing these zones. So to get started with this, we're going to go under Network, Wireless, and under the WLAN controller scaffold, we're going to click Create New. We need to name our WLAN controller, and then we need to select the type from the drop-down list. In this case, we're going to select Ruckus Smart Zone. We're then going to specify the host IP address. The username is already here by default. If you have a different username, go ahead and fill that out. And then we're going to specify the password for that account. That is all that's needed to establish the communication with the uh, smart zone controller. We do have some additional options here that we could be modifying. Um, if we wanted to filter out some of the zones or some domains, if we had multiple domains, we could specify all that stuff um, here as well, but we're going to go ahead and just scroll down and click create. After a few moments, you'll see that we get a green check mark stating that the smart zone that we imported is online. We can see the host address. We can see the model and version number as well. Uh, we then need to import the configuration from the smart zone. So we're going to click on import here next to our smart zone 51 instance. We're then going to select which zones that we want to import. We're going to choose site A and site B, and we're going to import the access points, the WLANs, as well as the AP profiles. So with those selected, we're going to choose import. And you can see the result is success. We're going to go ahead and close this. We can see that we've got some WLANs here listed now, as well as some access point zones. Uh, let me refresh APs and see if we get those to pull in as well. Yeah, we've got some APs coming in now as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set up the um, config synchronization. So right now we can see sync is not enabled. Um, by default, it is not enabled. So I'm going to click on sync. I'm then going to enable config synchronization, making sure that write memory is checked. We do get a message saying, you know, um, make sure that you've got a backup before doing this. Uh, I do have configuration backups on my smart zone instance uh, in case there's an issue with this. I would recommend you having that on hand as well. So before doing this, go ahead and pull a config backup from smart zone uh, and then choose OK. And we can see the config is already in sync is the message we're getting. We're going to close and we see now our config sync status is green. I want to take a second and pause and talk about RWG and smart zone from the point of uh, configurations, where you should be um, making configuration changes, which platform is the source of truth. Um, I'm actually going to bring up a table here that outlines this exact concept from the perspective of zones, WLANs, access points, and access point profiles. This table is taken from the Ruckus WAN Gateway Adoption of Devices Deployment Guide that you can find on our Ruckus wireless.com uh, support site. So um, from the context of zones, what this table is showing is that you can create zones from either smart zone or RWG, but you should delete zones only from RWG. Uh, with regards to the parameters and zone configuration, we've got available to us five gigahertz channels, country codes, as well as DFS uh, settings. And you can change those settings either from smart zone or RWG. Uh, from the perspective of WLANs, RWG is where you should be creating and deleting the WLANs. And the parameters available to do that are encryption type, authentication method, 
OFDM only, as well as 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz radios. And you should be changing those settings for the WLANs only from RWG. Uh, access points themselves can be created from Smart Zone or RWG, but should only be deleted from RWG. Uh, we can set the name uh, from Smart Zone and we can change the zone from RWG. Access point profiles are created and deleted from RWG, and we can set the access point parameters from within RWG as well. We can see that the WLANs that we created in Smart Zone did import into our Ruckus WAN gateway. However, as the table that is being displayed shows, not all types of WLANs are supported currently in the RWG. For instance, we are not supporting currently Hotspot Whisper, Guest Access, WebAuth, or Hotspot 2.0, as well as WeChat WLAN types. Those are not currently supported. This table also outlines kind of the terminology between Smart Zone and RWG. For instance, an open authentication method uh, in Smart Zone is referred to as none within RWG. You can reference this table to take a look at the rest of the differences between the WLAN types from each perspective. Now let's take a look at some of the configurations and options that are available under each of these scaffolds. We'll start just from the top down with WLANs, and you can see that all four of ours, as we said, did import, and we can see the SSIDs for those, what types of encryption are available for those as well, and we have the options uh, to edit them or display just the information for the configuration. So I clicked on display for the Corp WLAN and we can see the pre-shared key for this. If we wanted to edit this particular WLAN, if we wanted to actually input this to a pre-shared key that a human could actually have a chance at, we could just call it test, 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 and choose update. So again, we can do these configuration changes from the RWG as we talked about in that previous table. So we can edit the existing WLANs. We can also create a brand new WLAN. So I clicked create new and we'll call it test RWG. We'll select the access point zone. So let's say we want this for site A um, and the controller is already selected. It will show the site A AP profile, which is gonna be default. We'll select that. Um, we can then specify the SSID um, I'm going to make them both the same and then we can take a look at our encryption types. So again, we can do no encryption type, 128-bit uh, WEP, WPA2, 3, WPA2 slash 3, or WPA3, uh, WPA mix. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just choose WPA2 and we'll do that test, 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 pre-shared key again. Uh, we then can choose our default VLAN, whether or not this traffic is going to be tunneled. If we had a uh, smart zone data plane, we could do that. Uh, I'm going to disable this for 2.4 gigahertz. I only want this to be a 5 gigahertz WLAN, so we can do that here. We could turn on OFDM only, which would prevent those 802.11b clients from joining this WLAN. We could specify a radius realm and then set up some DVLAN configurations as well. Um, but with this done, I'm going to go ahead and choose create. And we can see that it actually put that test the RWG WLAN in there. Again, the um, pre-share key for that was test, test, test. Um, if we scroll down to that, we can see actually the clients are grayed out. So there's no clients here. We do have clients available under our site A guest. So if I click on that, we can actually see the device that's connected into this um, is my Android phone. So, and w which AP that is on, what channel, what my... Uh, transmission rates are, RSSI, SNR, things like that. So that's all good information. Uh, actually, let me just quickly switch over to that test RWG WLAN just to see uh, that it is working. So after refreshing, we can see that the client's link for test RWG now is uh, clickable. So if we click that, we can see the device of the same phone. We were able to connect into that uh, RWG created WLAN. It does have a different IP address. Uh, we can see again, the SNR, the RSSI. Um, we can see it's on channel 161. So we can see that we are connected to five gigahertz. Um, yeah, so let's, let's keep going. Let's take a look at access point profiles. So access point profiles are kind of like WLAN groups and 
AP groups within the smart zone, uh, we don't differentiate between those two things within the RWG context. They're kind of both the same thing. And as you can see, it defines which zone, uh, what the management LAN is, which WLANs uh, connect into that access point profile, as well as which access points are a member of it. Uh, let's just click on the site B default. We can edit that and we can see the zone there. We can see that it is default because this is checked. So anything without a profile for that site would be put here. We can then see which WLANs apply to it. And then we could change the management VLANs as well as adjust um, the radio gains or set this as an outdoor, uh, outdoor mode for, for APs that can do outdoor stuff. Uh, we can set that for this profile. We can then create additional AP profiles and associate those with zones. Underneath that, we can go down into our access points themselves. So you can see that we've got our three APs. Uh, we can see what models those are again and which channels that they are actually broadcasting on. And you can see I don't have anything connected into my 2.4 gigahertz. I did through Smart Zone turn that off per AP. Uh, so I am only running these devices at uh, 5 gigahertz. We can see what firmware versions they're running, how long they've been up, and we can reboot them from here so we can we can restart one of them we can look at the clients much like we could from the uh, WLAN perspective we can edit them show them things like that so let's click edit here we can see we could name it I believe you have to do the name from within smart zone um, and it'll push it back over let's actually test that let's um, go ahead and so this is the T310D so let me flip over to smart zone and reset that um, name on this T310D so let me go ahead and update this and change it from Ruckus AP to three, at Ruckus AP 310D, choose OK. So now our AP name is changed. Let's go back over to our RWG instance and let's refresh our access point and see if it actually pushes that over, which it should. Yep, so I refreshed and again, we've got our, our access point name uh, that updated there. So again, um, you have to make sure you're doing these configurations from the right perspective. If I were to edit, let's say the um, 650, let's edit the 650 and kind of do the same thing. So, so R650, let's update that here and see if it keeps it. I believe the name will not apply uh, from RWG to Smart Zone. Um, a lot of the other configurations will, but maybe the name is what I'm remembering. Yeah, so you can see it was there and I just refreshed and it took it right back out. So again, reference that table, reference that document to understand the full breadth of capabilities when you're talking about where to make configuration changes for things. Bringing this down finally to access point zones, we can see our two zones that we created, site A and site B. The controller that they're connected to, the access points associated to that zone, as well as the AP profiles uh, that are attached to those zones themselves. Uh, whether or not DFS is enabled and it looks like five gigahertz channel width is what is selected for these. Um, so I think from here we could import some additional APs to attach them to sites. If we click on edit, we can see that we can edit those settings that we just looked at in the column. So we could change our channel widths. We could disable DFS channels. We could set the country code, which is gonna adjust which uh, channels are available to us. Um, and we, we have our domain and our AP uh, login and password information here as well. So again, we've got our RWG instance tied into our smart zone. We were able to set up configuration synchronization. We just need to make sure that we're doing the configurations uh, from RWG mostly, especially the delete configurations, uh, just so we don't have any issues. But again, you should always be backing up um, configurations prior to implementation so that if anything does kind of go sideways, you can restore that and restart the configs. So we hope you enjoyed this one. Join us for the next one. And until then, thanks for watching.